Welcome back to my channel and a continuation of us kind of building some things around my house So you guys saw last time I built a DIY headboard for my bedroom, which completely transformed the space it made it feel more like it looked like the rest of the house very calming and neutral palette it's so beautiful i actually really love it if you haven't checked out that video i'll leave it linked down below for you so you can check it out but there was one other probably one of many but one other project that i really wanted to tackle which is an entryway table right back here where where kinsley where kinsley is this table will serve many, many purposes. One, Romeo comes in the house and puts his keys everywhere. Sometimes in the kitchen, sometimes on the back of the couch. So definitely a, like a little storage solution, a bowl of some kind that he can put his keys and wallet in. It's also gonna double as protection for the back of the couch. It makes sense for a table to be there. It'll fill out that space. And this little girl, we finally kind of broken her of it, but she tends to jump off the back of the couch and it scares me every time. If a table is there, she won't do that anymore. So many purposes for this entryway table. A very special thank you to Heart Tools for sponsoring these builds, the DIY headboard and now this entryway table. And you guys ask me all the time what my must have tools are. If you're gonna get into power tools, which ones should you get? What should you invest in? What's good to have? So throughout the video, I'm gonna be sharing my must have and why I got them, how they make sense um, with my power tool collection. So let's get started. Well, so this is the entryway. Obviously. You can actually push the couch about three inches that way. I want it super simple. I don't want to crowd this area. Granted, there's a lot more stuff in this area right now because of the holiday. From the couch where it's positioned now, we have 17 inches to the door. Exactly, like if I touch the couch and I touch the door. But we don't want it to go that far. Can't sleep. <laughs> we want the table to be about a foot deep. Don't want the console table higher than the couch. That would be super weird. 27 inches would like be exactly the same height. I'm thinking, originally I was like, okay, well we'll do it like five foot. Which I still think is, think is pretty good. The inches wide. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to work here. Originally I was gonna like, oh, I'm gonna put drawers and this, that. It's just gonna be too bulky of a piece and I want it super simple. So measure some things out in terms of wood and then we're gonna head to pick up some wood and come back and build it. First step is to measure and cut our largest piece of wood, which is gonna be our topper. So I'm gonna measure out five feet. And when I use my circular saw, I really like to have a straight line to follow to kind of guide the direction that I'm actually cutting in. So I'm putting on all of my safety gear and using my heart circular saw to cut this large piece of wood, just making sure that it's attached to the table so it stays in place. This circular saw comes in super handy when I need to make cuts on larger pieces of wood. And then the newest addition to my power tool family is this miter saw. And what I love about a miter saw is that I have control over the cuts a lot better. So since the wood is more stationary on the plate of a miter saw, I just find that the cuts are a lot more clean. And I'm gonna use this miter saw to cut our two by four pieces that we need and also our one by two pieces that we're gonna be using for the framing for our trim. A great thing about Heart Tools cordless collection is that all of their batteries are interchangeable so I can can simply just remove the battery from my heart circular saw and move it into my drill to keep working on this project. The trims that I were finding that I actually liked were thicker than my piece of wood. So I actually found that I had to pick up an extra piece of wood just to make a frame that the trim could glue to just so it was nice and finished. I've mentioned before that I have this great 200 piece drill and bit set that has every drill bit or hex attachment or little piece that I've needed for all of my projects. So I'm gonna be pulling out a drill 
bit that's the same diameter of the screws that I'm gonna be using to screw this framing to the topper. So once I found the one that I need, I'm gonna be drilling pilot holes in the wood just so that this prevents it from splitting. Once those pilot holes are all completed, I'm gonna go back with the one and a quarter inch wood screws that I just had in my stash, and I'm gonna be attaching this framing to the topper. So you can see that it's the same width of the trim now. Now we need to miter the trim edges so that we can have it all fit together nicely. So my mitering, it means I'm just going to put the corners at a 45 degree angle. And this miter saw is so handy because you can simply turn it to 45 degrees and then it cuts a perfect straight 45 degree angle line in your trim so that you can put it all together like a corner. And the trim is actually gonna be the last thing that we apply, so I'm gonna put that aside for now. Next, I'm gonna work on the legs. And we're basically gonna be building like a U shape out of these two by fours. So we need to drill some pocket holes to put all of them together. So I'm gonna use this pocket hole maker and all of the supplies that it comes with it. And I'm gonna be drilling pocket holes in the smallest two by four. I'm gonna be drilling into A and C on one side of the small piece of wood and then flipping it over and doing it again, but in different holes, just staggering the holes on each side so that they don't overlap. And I can still use all of the holes on each side. This is a little bit of a tricky piece because it's so small, but it totally worked out. In addition to putting pocket holes in the five and a quarter inch piece of two by four, I'm also going to do it only on one side, on one end of our 25 and a half inch pieces. So after you've applied all of the pocket holes, we're gonna create that U shape and put the leg together. Take your small piece and make sure your pocket holes are facing down so that you don't see them. So this will sit on the floor and you're gonna take your two and a half inch pocket hole screws and then screw it all together. And you can kind of tell which way the pocket holes are going so that you know which hole to put your screw into which. So once you get one side on, you can flip it over and screw in the other side of the leg. And I'm just using another piece of wood just as a support. Next, we're gonna be attaching the leg to the tabletop. And I'm putting the U-shaped leg right up against the trim frame that I created um, so that all of those pieces are touching using the same two and a half inch pocket hole screws to screw it in and do that for both legs. Okay, so for the trim, we need to put it on before we can condition the wood and stain it. So we're gonna apply it with wood glue and you could totally, I don't know why I forget this step sometimes, like on the, all the joints where you're connecting the wood together, use wood glue. Don't do what I just did. I always, for some reason, forget on some things and then I always remember on other things. These very, very tight brad nails and it'll help to hold it in place and the wood glue is really strong. I'm gonna do the long front piece first. A little bit kind of goes a long way with wood glue, so you don't need too, too much. We're gonna flip it right into place, matching up that inside mitered corner with the corner of the cabinet. And we're just gonna use a few of these nails just to get the nail in further since my trim is so uh, ribbed. I just used a, a screwdriver and just put it right on the head of the nail, like this, and then just kind of gave it a light tap to get it in there a little further so you don't see it, so we can cover it with wood putty. So I'm just gonna keep flipping it over, doing the same thing to all the sides, and then we can condition it and stain it. We got all the trim on, and you know, you live and you learn. I measured so many times to cut this trim. I measured it on the piece. I didn't even use like number, I like marked it, put each piece, and I still came up short on the side pieces, and I don't know how, but I positioned them towards the back, so that I could hopefully fill them in with wood putty and then you can't really tell. I want to do some wood filler because right on the edges of the main piece of wood, the edges are rounded. So there's this kind of like divot or space in between the curved main piece of wood and the trim. And I just want all of that to be super flat and look really polished. So I used to use this wood stain a uh, stainable wood filler. And I noticed that it's very grainy. I wanted to try something different. So I got this one, color changing wood filler. So I'm hoping that this kind of, you know, stuff works. So we're gonna do that.
So now that that's dry on top, I'm gonna take some sandpaper and then sand it all down here so that it's smoother so we can stain it. Also, the wood filler totally filled in the gaps in the trim on the backside, so it wasn't a problem at all. Next, I'm gonna be using a wood conditioner, and this I find helps with just the stain having an overall um, more uniform coverage, and it looks a lot more smooth and pretty. So I'm just gonna apply that to all over this console table and let that dry really well. Then I'm gonna go back with a fine piece of sandpaper, just making sure that all of the pieces are really smooth. It kind of bubbles up in some places, so you just wanna make sure that it's all really smooth. I'm gonna be using the stain color in English Chestnut. That's what I use throughout my house, so it has like some red undertones, um, and I just find that it's a really good ashy red, little bit of yellow, I just really like this wood stain. So in order for all of my furniture pieces to really complement, I'm gonna be using this one on this piece as well in the entryway. And I sometimes go back and do two coats of stain depending on how well the wood takes it, but this took it really well and I'm really happy with just how one coat came out. And to apply it, I'm just using a rag and especially on this trim area, I'm just kind of using my finger to kind of go into all of the grooves. You could also use a foam brush or something to get into all of those ridges. After that dries really well for about four to six hours, I'm gonna go back with some poly acrylic sealer and apply several coats to the entire thing, but especially on the top so it's more durable. It's officially the next day and we have a table. I'm so excited, I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, Oh, she's cute. I like her. I love the trim detail that we put around the top. It made it just feel that much more special. Let's style it for Christmas. I feel like that's gonna be um, the most appropriate for right now. I don't wanna overload it. Obviously, this is open air. I don't know, maybe we can play around with some decor that maybe I already have. Underneath an entryway table, even if it's against the wall, I always see people, I think it's a good idea to put either baskets for more storage, so you could like maybe even put two underneath. You could put stools. I'm obviously not gonna put stools because I don't want anyone sitting at this right in the entryway. I do have this basket. It would be really pretty maybe to get one more, but we'll just work with one, <laughs> one for now. Right here, maybe on the side. And then if you guys saw my flea market vlog, I found this really beautiful Bro. And he told me that it was vintage. We've later discovered it's not. That was a whole situation, but I loved the colors. It was just so pretty. So I thought this would be pretty kind of like in the basket, if that makes sense. Kind of like coming out a little bit, but kind of like that. And I do have a few Christmas things left that don't have a home yet, but this one I had in my kitchen and it's just so pretty. I may make another one. We can see what it looks like. Maybe off to the off to the side like this. I actually thought I was gonna put lamps on this table. I just feel like in the entryway here, I just think that they're too tall and I think it'd be weird. And I wanna see my Christmas tree. So like, I, I, I don't know, we can play around with that too, but I feel like this was really pretty. A must have is definitely some kind of like bowl storage thing for Romeo to put his keys in. So these are my options. What do you think, Kinsley? So I've got this bowl that I got at the flea market. This actually, I put fruit in it on my table, but when we did like Christmas decorations, I took it off. So it doesn't have a current home. That could be an option, but it's a little silver for my liking. This I have, this was one of the baking soda paint bowls that we did, but I feel like the hole is a little, even though it's kind of big, it's still small for him. It is really pretty. I just feel like he'll like beat it up, like scratching it with keys and stuff. I don't know. And I also have this little tray, which would be most durable, I feel like. This would also be really durable. We could see what that looks. I kind of like the tray, but then it's so, like the wood, it kind of blends in. But maybe I like that. I don't want this to be junky at all. You guys know I love books on things. I don't know if it's necessary or maybe not the bottom one, maybe this one. Simplify. Also, when I was at the flea market, I got more brass candle holders, because why not? I found more of them. I'll leave that video linked for you if you haven't seen it. Do a little of this situation. Is that overboard? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a little Christmas tree? Bring in a little more Christmas? 
It's actually kind of cute. I feel like with stuff like this, I live with it for a little while. I play around with things. I move stuff around. I'll move some of the bottle brush trees over. Just kind of always a work in progress because I love styling and I love moving stuff around just to make moments in the house that this is good for now. And then, you know, we'll see where, where the rest takes us. But it's functional. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, building a little entryway table with me. I hope this is something that you guys try out and try and get started with power tools if you've ever been interested in it. It was probably one of the greatest things that I've ever got into because it just expanded so many different projects that I can work on and I've gotten so much more comfortable with it. So I wish that for all of you guys too because I mean building a table in a day or an afternoon rather really isn't bad and now I have a new entryway table so if you guys haven't checked out the bedroom makeover too I'll leave it linked for you so that you guys can check out the other build that I did with heart tools and if you want to check out my must-have tools I'll leave them all linked for you so that you can get started with your little collection oh we've got some fun holiday content coming up um, we've got some more fun room makeover so you're not gonna want to miss them so if you're not already subscribed hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload every Sunday and I also have a vlog channel I do post an additional video every week over on my vlog channel. So it's just a behind the scenes, more about our lives, Kinsley, Romeo, all of the work that goes into creating these videos for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy them and this. And Kinsley's going crazy. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Ready? I am so cold. It is so cold. Okay, but we got a table to build. <laughs>